Okay guys, it's Mr. Stark here again, and I want to show you a couple of uh, cool little things and, you know, have a conversation about why semiconductors. So every time I've had to teach this course, I've had, you know, people and other electricians and friends and students say, well, why do we need to know this stuff? And I like to look at it as we're taking what was once a, a big world and the electrical theory and fundamentals that we understand in the big wire world have then been kind of shrunken down to the small world or really invisible world, if you will, of the semiconductor. And you'll find that after seeing this quick little video that a lot of the things that we use today, electronics, any type of electronics that you can possibly imagine, has components that are called semiconductors that are embedded into these circuit chips and they play a huge role in what we enjoy from video games to cell phones to i mean you you name it we all know electronics are in our, in our lives and they're just you know they're they're everywhere so with that being said i'd like to kind of show you the difference between the two so this is a relay and it's kind of a cool relay because it shows all the parts on it but what's interesting about this relay is it's definitely a electrical slash mechanical relay. And if you're looking at this, uh, there's a lot of movable parts. And you can hear it's a lot of clunky stuff. Uh, you've got some wire here that's attached to a screw where we would have to land a wire to control this uh, particular device. And basically what a relay does is it allows you to control a circuit from a remote location uh, using a small wire and then change over to a full-size wire uh, to control your load and you could really control two or three or multiple circuits by the use of a relay this is a good example of really when we get into motor controls uh, how a relay works I'm not going to go too deep into it now because I'll save that for motor controls but you can see that Inside this relay, deep inside, there's a, uh, like a cylinder in here. There's a bunch of wire inside there that acts like an uh, inductive coil, if you will. When I put current through the wire that's inside this winding of wire, it creates magnetism. And in the process of creating magnetism, it allows this gap that's in here. I don't know if you can quite see it. There's a little gap. It allows that gap to become magnet. It'll magnetize and then pull this plunger down. And it'll hold it closed through magnetism. And then when you release the energy that's allowing that to work, it'll go back to its normal position. So a lot of you guys are already familiar with relays. <clears throat> I've got a much better discussion on this coming up in motor controls. Now, if I look at this, there's many spots to land wire. So if we look at this one side... There's one, two, three, four, and it's exactly the same on the other side. One, two, three, four. Very similarly, if I take this relay <clears throat> and replace it with this, I've got a very similar thing. I've got some wires that are here, which represent the same purpose as those screws in the contactor. But the biggest difference is, is I don't have any of these mechanical parts. These are all semiconductors. <clears throat> all I did was I took this thing apart and it goes inside here, it just sits in there all by itself. Uh, the hole is for an LED, which is right here. Most of us are familiar with light emitting diodes. So you got an LED, that's a semiconductor, and <clears throat> a type of diode. We've got some resistors in here, we've got a transistor, an electrolytic capacitor, a type of ceramic capacitor. We've got a diode, another resistor, and some other capacitors. And you also have a, a, a little circuit chip. And this big white box that's, let me get this wiring out of the way. This big white box is actually the contact portion. This big thing replaces this big mechanical feature here this whole up up and down uh springy wiry big mess of a thing that's got all kinds of parts that could have to be replaced over time <clears throat> so you can really see that 
the semiconductor world has taken a lot of these big pieces, big parts that need replacing and need adjusting and need tuning over time and has simplified it greatly, although complex on a kind of a microscopic level, and replaced it with really good, high reliable parts, uh, not affected by many different conditions. So, you know, when you look at one and look at the other, this looks uh, complicated, but it, it's really no more complicated than this thing used to look the first time we saw one of these. So if we embrace the semiconductor world, uh, we'll realize that it's a huge part of our electrical knowledge. The state of Connecticut <clears throat> years ago wanted to put another course into the curriculum for the trades, particularly electrical, that has to do with more of the up-and-coming things that, so we can have a, a, a half a clue on what's going on in the world, in, in the electronics world. We don't replace these parts in the field. We're not even going to really test or tune them. We just need to be aware of how these things work. So really the purpose of this course is we're going to learn about LEDs. We'll learn about resistors. We'll learn particularly a little more information about transistors, which are right in here. Uh, capacitors will save for theory two. Diodes we have to talk about quite a bit. And, you know, we always talk about wires, you know, we can't get away from them. But it's a pretty cool thing. So, you know, if nothing else, if you can get something out of this video, it's kind of to introduce you into the world of uh, the microscopic world of electrical, if you will. That's how I like to look at it. Because it's when you understand how... Uh, these things affect the rate of current or the controlling of voltage then you understand your electrical theory that much more especially when we go into that uh, later on in, your, in the course of your year at, at Porter and Chester so once again a uh, big beefy part mechanical pieces the old way uh, this would have been a relay uh, solid state components which by the way solid state once again means parts that don't move and uh, but do perform a function nice simplified uh, way of making a relay and you can see you know there's a board where all these things are soldered on and it's actually quite interesting had we been in lab we'd be soldering parts and making things uh, in a lab setting actually cool things I'll show you later like radios and headphones and uh, uh, voltage meters and, and, and different kinds of things amplifiers we learn how to solder, so it's kind of cool. But because we're here, we have to just kind of get through this as best we can in seven days. So I hope this uh, helps out a little bit, kind of gets your brain opening uh, and getting ready for semiconductors. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you at the next video.